Go on with the okay. Sidewalks. My second agenda item is probably a, a easier topic than the first, um, but um, what uh, we're passing around now is um, the recommendation uh, to the Hampton Board of Selectmen, and and what I like to do is uh, have uh, some comment on this from the commission, uh, and then pass it over to. Uh, Board of Selectmen for comments and, and, and questions. Um, first of all, <clears throat> for once again our RSA uh, 216J. Under 216J colon 3 Roman numeral 1 and 2, it's the responsibility of the Hampton Beach Area Commission to advise and consult on matters that have an impact on the Hampton Beach Master Plan strategies advise and consult. We are not decision makers. Um, in this particular case, you will be the decision makers. You will be deciding on whether or not you will accept our recommendation, but you will be the decision makers. The other, the other thing that I think is, is very important is that when we look at transportation, when we look at traffic control, when we look at reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard, it's very clear in both uh, the existing conditions of the Hampton Beach Area Commission, where it, in talk, it does in talk, talk about the poor condition of Ocean Boulevard, and that is back in 2001. And under the transportation and um, related recommendations, which is in section number four, it talks about transportation recommendations and the reconstruct the need to reconstruct Ocean Boulevard. So both of uh, the, the existing conditions and the recommendations indicate that it's within our uh, responsibilities as a commission to explore uh, and review those areas. And then in exploring those areas to try to find remedies, trying to find strategies that would improve on those conditions. But once again, we can only advise and consult. So before I give my comments, I'd like to introduce some members that have asked to speak in front of the board tonight. And, and the first one is Mr. Watson, once again represents uh, the Department of Transportation. So good evening, everyone. My name is Bill Watson. For the record, I am the administrator of the Bureau of Planning and Community Assistance at DOT. I've been a representative of this Beach Commission under Commissioner Campbell, Clement, uh, Commissioner Sheehan now, <coughs> and the interim commissioners in between uh, um, those as, as we found um, the next leader for our agency. Um, my door is always open. Mr. Bean's been to my office and visited me in Concord. I've been down to talk with the town manager and other officials about sidewalks and other uh, related topics. Um, I grabbed the superintendent on her way out the door to my office that oversees the Safe Routes to School program. Uh, so if she's looking for some more money for some of the sidewalks related to Safe Routes to School for the Marston School, um, she'll be contacting me tomorrow or my staff tomorrow to see what opportunities we have because there is some leftover money out there. Um, and for many of these topics, it's why I love my job and I love being with the Speech Commission. Um, and not many people in state service can say they love their job, quite honestly. <laughs> um, that being said, I, I, I have the opportunity to work with many people, and um, when I need support from others, um, that support is there, and when the commissioner's office feels that I'm doing an okay job, um, then they, they let me do what I feel I do well. So as we go through the evening tonight, in one of those cases where I do need support, uh, we like to bring our, our directors and our appointed officials out. So I'll just um, identify them in the back. Dave Rodrigue is our director of operations. Uh, Dave oversees maintenance, all highway maintenance for the state uh, DOT. So when we talk about the coordination and the cooperation between the state and the town and dread for cleaning up the, the snow that appeared and disappeared quickly a couple of winters ago, it's Dave and his staff that make all that uh, possible, uh, as well as many other maintenance needs throughout the state. Um, 
as it relates to sidewalks and and I'm, I'm going to blend a little bit and I apologize if you'll bear with me for for the master plan or the, the Beach Commission annual report and the, and and sidewalks um, our stake is the same as yours in this conversation about sidewalks we're not in charge you know, we can talk about ownership and maintenance if you want to think of things and, and people being in charge of things but our interests are the same um, so as it relates to this three hundred thousand dollar grant these federal funds that are updating the master plan right now um, the department offered to step in and help the Beach Commission manage the money because there are so many strings attached to the funds we didn't want anybody getting into any trouble and I think the superintendent um, hinted at that a little bit when she was sitting here earlier talking about safers to school money um, and and to Selectman Bean's comments about the the required updates of the master plan that's the exact reason why we have this grant from from the Federal Highway Administration is to do those updates that we should be doing whether it's according to state law or just good business uh, so the DOT is helping to manage the project we're overseeing the funds make sure they're spent in compliance with federal highway uh, requirements but in terms of the products the updates of the master plan any recommendations that come out of it any recommendations from sidewalks it's the Beach Commission that that is the owner of that master plan update so it's all of us sitting here and you are all you at the, up at the table represented by John and Rick and all of the other organizations that are represented by the gentleman is sitting here and it just it, it's important to point that out that as we talk this isn't a, a, a an us versus them conversation this is all of us that have been working together um, John already mentioned that through the 10-year plan process uh, two years ago uh, there was an effort with Councilor Sununu's support to add two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the ten-year plan to study Ocean Boulevard. That's above and beyond the three hundred thousand that we have right t right now today uh, for the master plan update. And there's going to be money left over from that master plan update that can continue to inform and, and start this study, the actual design work on Ocean Boulevard. And as Senator Stiles mentioned earlier. Um, we have not only about eight million dollars total dollars now in the 10-year plan for reconstruction the engineering's moved up into 2019 and 20. so we have a study going on right now that's going to finish in the next year or so we're going to um, which is a high level master plan update then we're going to dive right into the the engineering of ocean boulevard and in 19 and 20 we're going to be talking about what those ultimate improvements will look like we're going to have actual design plans created informed by many of the meetings that we've had over the last year or so public uh, hearings public meetings many of you have sat in them the past board has um, been involved in them as well uh, to to identify what the vision is for the the future moving forward and ultimately we're going to get to a point and this is where where it may become a little bit more DOT versus the town in some ways uh, that we have to have a conversation about sidewalks uh, and that's a conversation that whether it was Chris Clement or whether it's Victoria Sheehan or myself or whomever we're representing the department is open and ready to have with the town and and <coughs> compromise is part of the solution uh, whether it was represented as rice comments earlier that we all walk away a little unhappy in compromise or we all look at the positive side of that as to what the seacoast has to gain uh, from from all of the parties working together I think we've all seen what we have to gain with what dread has already accomplished with the work on the east side and how that's benefited um, the beach in general so I guess you know I'll, I'll wrap up quickly we are here um, the department is supportive of conversations um, we do not maintain sidewalks and that is a, a reality of, of this conversation we have to work with over the next few years if the if now is the time that the board is interested in opening to opening uh, interested and open to having conversation with the agency you have the commissioner's commitment uh, you have it from from my from my voice you have it from the senator's voice earlier <laughs> that we're ready to come to the town we're ready to come and meet with all of you and work on a solution that is acceptable and um, um, workable for all of us clarify because I, I, I think this is very very important correct me if I'm wrong 
that the willingness from both parties to work together, one has to understand that the acceptance of the maintenance of the sidewalk cannot be used as a um, it, it, it just it's 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 not something that can be put on the table I, th I think the the director can speak um, for me with a great level more detail but it is safe for me to say that we do not have the staff or the dollars uh, selectman Bean, you're you're rightfully frustrated at the lack of revenue that the town gets back from the meters and rooms and meals tax etc we don't get any of that dollar any either um, none of that money comes to the department to maintain anything down here in the beach area. We don't have any additional resources um, for maintaining sidewalks. We don't have any staff for maintaining sidewalks. The gas tax that's out there, the road toll <coughs> that's out there, is barely enough for us to fund our operations to keep roads open in the winter time. So as it as as it relates to sidewalks, it cannot be a conversation for us about the the state taking on that responsibility for maintaining a sidewalk. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Rage. I'll, I'll be quick. Um, the commissioners of the Hampton Beach Village District unanimously voted for the Board of Selectmen to support the Hampton Beach Commission. And the, I, I sent a letter in, I'm sure you've all got it, um, with our motion. I think bringing everybody to the table and, 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 and coming up with a solution is very doable. And uh, we will help in any way that we can. And I know everybody in this room has been down to the beach from the, from the bridge all the way down the Winnicott kind of Road. We've seen the conditions of the sidewalks. And something has to be done. This is in a 10-year plan. I don't want it to be in the 20-year plan. I don't want it to be in the 30-year plan. I've been down on the beach since 1981. And every year, it gets worse. And I see people tripping. I see flooding. I see that there's so many layers on Ocean Boulevard, I think we're at nine now, I'm not sure, that there isn't a sidewalk. The people walk into the street and are we gonna wait till there's more accidents and are we gonna wait till um, there isn't a way for people to load and unload getting into their businesses um, where trucks are gonna be hitting pedestrians because there, there isn't a sidewalk. People just walk everywhere. And if we can get a proper sidewalk where it's not three feet wide, where we have an area where people can walk. I I was down uh, the island section. The island section seems to get forgotten on a lot of times. And there was one sidewalk there that I don't think it was 30 inches. And I wish I was a little smaller. I could fit on a 30 inch sidewalk, but I can't. Um, we, we definitely need to work on this uh, for, the, for the town, for the village district, and for our tourists. Thank you. Mr. Murrow, would you like to add? I know that you were at a wedding uh, at our last meeting, so congratulations, by the way. Well, thank you. Um, the record, I, I'm Dean Merrill. I'm the uh, commissioner at large, I guess larger uh, in a few pounds from the wedding, which is a great time, but my wallet's a lot lighter. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I've been on this commission, I'm, I guess, the, the young person for, for three years, but uh, I've got to know what these, these, this group of people do. And, uh, and also, my, my year is to you know, have residents down at the beach along with the town and, and customers and so forth. And I think there, there's no debate that this, you know, the sidewalks need to be fixed, uh, I mean, you know, repaired and, and t maintained and those type of things. And I was looking down at some things like maybe Phil was looking at and maybe um, I'll bring up my grandfather because uh, he was in the state legislature. And this is probably around the same time, 19 1933 that he was probably up there and helped draft this agreement. Um, I will say that uh, he would he you know I know Mr. Rice had mentioned the Model Ts and whatever. There was a Model T down beach last week. I was driving it, but uh, um, but my grandfather would always look forward thinking. Uh, never talk about the past. Never talked about his is you know what he grew up with, but it was always forward thinking, and, and I, I think that's what this this commission has done as this group. And you know, just to bring this forward, to I appreciate the time tonight because um, I, we, we really think it's an important issue, and uh, let's see if we can get it done. 
Mr. Chairman, would you let the record show that Mr. Um, Merrill, while he is the uh, commissioner at large and he lives in Exeter, he has and his family lived in, some of them lived in Hampton Falls, but they've been business people that have operated here in Hampton forever. <laughs> And uh, so he's a very active business person here in Hampton. We also own property up on High Street, too, with oh, offices. Good. So. so then you are a taxpayer. <laughs> <laughs> Next is, uh, and I just want to just add one verbal comment with regard to Mr. Hausman um, and Mr. Bryce, who uh, I was with last week, <coughs> both of them, and in conversation with both, uh, shared with me that it I could, uh, with their permission, uh, share with the Board of Selectmen tonight that they will continue to support the efforts of winter uh, snow removal on the east side of Ocean Boulevard as long as the uh, budgets uh, continue on. Uh, but they are very willing to continue to be partners with the town and and uh, take their responsibility with regard to snow removal on the east, co uh, east side of uh, Ocean Boulevard. Uh, we now have Mr. Preston representing the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, John. Um, in order to not to be uh, redundant, I submitted many of my comments to you already for you to uh, have a minute to, to look over. Um, the reason being is I'm the quiet one on the board and they don't give me a chance to talk very much. <laughs> and after you heard Mr. Lawson, you know, he's the eloquent, eloquent one. So that he's hard to follow. A couple of you people have served in Concord. You, you, you know what that's like to bring forth legislation up there. It's really an uphill battle. You know, and yet, when I look at the efforts of Senator Stiles, she's incredible. You know, for her to bring this forward, being the chairman of the Trans Transportation Committee, you know, that's, that's a, a great accomplishment in itself. But for her to bring that kind of money to Hampton is wonderful. You know, we work with, with Bill Watson and Mike Hausman all year long for several years. I, I don't think it's appropriate to hear, you know, that, that we fight with the state because I can tell you there's a lot of uh, cooperation with what, what we do. When you look at a plan like this, you got to say to yourself, well, well, you know, what if you vote it down? I'm going to say, well, when is the next opportunity going to come along? The, the state doesn't come in and say we're going to spend six or eight million dollars, you know, in your town. And they particularly don't want to do it when you want to beat them up. Now, I heard earlier that we're, we're a third world, world nation. Well, I got to tell you today, this week I voted for Hampton Beach as one of the best boardwalks in the country. And we were number seven the last I, I read. So I, I, don't think, I don't think that it's fair to say that they don't do anything for us. You look at what's happening down that beach, it's incredible. I do want to go over a couple of the comments that I said to you just for the public. You know, years ago, the town voted to spend a lot of money. And when they did that to the, for the infrastructure, that, that's when things began to change. We didn't know it, but that's when they started. All that money, most of it went underground, but a lot of it went into sidewalks. So when you go down Ashworth Avenue today, those sidewalks look pretty nice. Sometime after that, Again, Senator Stiles, John, a lot of people in this room said, we're going to lobby to get a new seashell. And, and many of us said, in, in the, with the economy that we had at the time, we're never going to get $14 million in town. And yet, they did it. And that new seashell has become the jewel of the state park system. At that point, within a couple of years, the, the, the seeds seeds of, of growth of Hampton Beach became. Millions of dollars, millions of dollars of private money has started to come in to, to the beach, you know, with all, all the new condos. But it's not just condos. In my end, I look at all those houses, houses that have been totally renovated. And those are just as important as the big buildings because they help keep the character of our town, which we all want, I think. So, we're here to ask you that we want to continue with the transformation of Hampton Beach. And it is a transformation. I mean, it's amazing when I hear from my guests, you know, how, how much better it looks and they, they don't remember anything like that. People have not have been here for five years. 
have no clue in how it looks. Now, you, the board, have an opportunity to get an additional six, $6 million, but it's probably more, and it could be when we're all done, $16 million, to redo the boulevard. I think this is great for Hampton. I, I think it's great for our town's tax base. The assessments are all going to go up. The things that are happening down there are phenomenal. In order to get this big investment, the cost to us is we're going to maintain the sidewalk. Who's maintaining the sidewalks? I walk that boulevard. Nobody's maintaining those sidewalks. They're terrible. I don't know what they're going to look like in, in eight years. <clears throat> but this is the start to do something really, really good. And I hope that you can vote with us. Thank you. And, and finally, uh, Mr. Ladd. I certainly don't want to repeat everything that's been said, but I agree with everything that's been said. It seems to me the state and the town are in an irreversible marriage. We've got to figure out some way for it to work for both sides. And my experience for many years in the court system was if you don't talk, you can't solve anything. We, you know, the only way you fail is when you fail to try. And what I heard from Senator Stiles tonight was the state is already offering the olive branch of taking the snow. If you take it from the sidewalk and put it on Ocean Boulevard, they'll take it away. That, to me, from a mediating point of view, is a significant moment in time. Don't underestimate that. The state is saying, we want to talk. I don't think there should be any doubt that we should talk. What the result of that conversation might be will be determined at some future day. The only mistake tonight that could be made would be to refuse to talk. That would end the conversation, would end the opportunity, and we'll all be dead before the next opportunity presents itself. And uh, this has nothing to do with that, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make one comment at the end of the meeting. I put, I failed to identify the volunteer coordinator for the sandcastles, and if I don't do that, I may end up under the sand record. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I just have some some quick comments, um, and then pass it back to you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, first of all, people have talked about this 1933 agreement. Well, I guess I would agree with Dean's uh, grandfather's comments that you got you got to look forward before you look back. And yeah, there might have been an agreement back in 1933. But there's so much been happening and so much has been done since 1933 down at Hampton Beach. I'm not sure um, how strong that agreement um, uh, is in today's world. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about how back in 2012 there was a Warren article, Warren Article 31, that 65 percent of the residents voted that article down saying that they did not want the town to enter into an MOU with the Department of Transportation for the maintenance of the sidewalks. Along with that, there was discussions that were brought up about the cost. Cost anywhere from $500,000 to most recently at a planning board meeting where it was a million dollars for the town to take over that cost. Well, I believe most recently some of that financial uh, amount has been reduced, both from a liability and, and from a maintenance cost. So I don't think it's, it's $500,000. But more importantly, that Warren article that people voted down is not what we're recommending tonight. That Warren article basically said town of Hampton residents, do you want the town of Hampton to take over the responsibilities of the sidewalks 2012? The conditions that the sidewalks are in today. What we're proposing, something totally different. What we're proposing is that the town of Hampton take over the responsibility the maintenance of the sidewalks 
when and only if there are new sidewalks constructed and ADA compliant. Exposure to ADA. I feel as strong as all of you in terms of that is a liability. But right now, the town of Hampton has the responsibility of 29 miles of sidewalk. What we're suggesting is add two more miles to that, because that's the distance that we're talking about in terms of the maintaining of the sidewalks that we're proposing. Two more miles. And those two more miles would become ADA compliant before taking over the responsibility. I was, con I was quoted recently, and it might have disturbed some of you, about the word compromise, and how I, how I said that, you know, we need to compromise on this issue. And I can assure you, as a representative of the town, appointed by the selectmen, but representing the town of Hampton, that I, as one commissioner, have had a lot of discussions with the state. Mr. Watson will attest that I have been talking to him for close to two years now with what if, what if that, what if this. So as a commissioner, I took my job serious to look at both sides of the issue. And I can assure you that if there was a way that I could have talked the Department of Transportation into making an exception in this particular case, I would have tried, and, and I did. But if you put that aside for a minute, that compromise, well, okay, if they're saying, no, we can't take the sidewalk maintenance, DOT can't take it, but what can we offer the town of Hampton in lieu of? Let me just name a couple of them. First of all, DOT has been supportive <coughs> from day one when we started talking about the reconstruction of, of Ocean Boulevard, from day one. The town of Hampton and DOT and the Beach Commission were hand in hand in hand in every effort in looking at funds to reconstruct Ocean Boulevard. So they have been our partner from day one. The grant that they're administering for us right now is all free of charge. It's not costing the grant money, it's not costing the beach uh, commission or anybody. Their administration of this grant is all free of charge. So there's no cost. And as you already heard, both from the senator and from, from Bill, if we can get past this maintenance agreement, the secretary, I mean, I'm sorry, the commissioner, Bill's office, the Beach Commission. Everybody will work hard to make sure that compromises of how we can help, whether or not it's pushing the snow on the road and having DOT take the snow away, whatever that case might be. So, you know, when, when you look at compromise, to me, those are compromises. So in closing, and, and I'm, I'm doing this for the public, uh, and for the people in the audience, you all have a written copy of our recommendation. After careful review and consideration and wanting to continue the transformation of Hampton Beach, the Hampton Beach Area Commission is recommending to the Hampton Board of Selectmen that once the Ocean Boulevard construction project has been funded without any cash match requirement from the town, and the work has been completed, which would include a brand new road, all new sidewalks, and drainage. And drainage, we all know, is an issue, not only with the state, but with the town itself. So roadway, sidewalks, and drainage. Only then would then the town be responsible to take over the responsibilities of the maintenance of the sidewalks on the west side of Ocean Boulevard from the intersection of Ashworth and Ocean Boulevard 
on the south end up to the intersection of uh, Ocean Boulevard and Winnicott Road on the north end. So in closing, we can only advise, we can only recommend. Mr. It's Chairman, your decision. I would like to make that motion that he just... Before said. I hear any motions, I'm going to allow this board to speak first. Okay, get then questions. I just want to set, I want to, let the, uh, if that's the way it is, because that's not the way we've been conducting business here, but if it's going to so, be that way, it will be that way every time from now on. Then make, a, I would like to make, make a motion. The motion. Make then make your motion. Okay. We'll have a second, and yeah. then we'll have the construct the that's con right. conversation. Because that's the way we. But do we it. all will have con conversation okay. over that. Yeah, of course we will. You're right. That's the way we usually do it. I didn't want to see it be done differently tonight. After careful review and consideration, and wanting to continue the transformation of Hampton Beach, the Hampton Beach Area Commission is recommending to the Hampton Board of Selectmen that once the Ocean Boulevard reconstruction project has been funded without any cash match requirement from the town of Hampton and the work has been completed, new roadway, new sidewalks, and new drainage, that the town take over the responsibility of maintenance of the sidewalks on the west side of Ocean Boulevard from the intersection of Ashworth, Ocean Boulevard, South End, up to the corner of Ocean Boulevard and Winniconnet Road, North End. I'll second Rick's motion. Thank you. And as we're open this up, we're going to open this up for discussion. And I would like to start. Go right ahead. Um, I would just like to make it very clear <coughs> that nothing is going to be spent for eight years. There won't be this road. It, well, it could be finished faster, but it's highly unlikely. Um, unless some sort of influx comes from the federal government after the election, and that is possible. But I'd say it certainly isn't going to be any more than five or six years. And from what we talked about at the meeting the other night, it looks like eight years. Um, the people that live, like when I mentioned about the $12 million that uh, if the Hampton Beach Precinct pays, that, in, that also includes the $4 million four and a half million that the residents of Ocean Boulevard pay um, from 7 Ocean Boulevard to 615, which brings us down to Winnicunnet Road. These same residents paid $421,000, uh, but they didn't pay at all. The whole town paid $421,000 to have the excess snow removed from the beach area. Mr. Uh, Welch, does that include the snow that was uptown, like on those roads? Yes, it does. So it also includes the snow that was removed. What's the name of that road where the, we had the big problem with? Lampson was the biggest one. Lampson Lane. It was an emergency. So this was in an emergency time. It was 421000 These residents that write out a check for $4.5 or more, um, they gladly contributed to that. They've gladly contributed to all the equipment that has been um, bought through the years, every plow truck that's plowed uh, for the roads, because the roads at the beach are going to continually continue to be plowed by the state. Um, so we, at those, those residents, really, their roads in front of their house are being done by the state, but they still pay to, uh, to buy new plows they bought three sidewalk plows, which I believe go for between, is it 250 and 375, Mr. Welch? The current ones that we have now run about $200,000. 200000 okay. I'm not off there. I believe, I think John said there was 29 miles of sidewalk. I think uh, Chris Jacobs told me today that is 22 miles of sidewalks, Chris? Oh, look at my he said 22 earlier, so I'm not really sure. I want to make sure we have the, re the uh, right figures here. But these citizens from 7 Ocean Boulevard to 615, it's only two and a half miles, but yet they pay for 22 miles of sidewalks being plowed as soon as they can uh, uptown. And, you know, they have no other choice but to contribute. They also... Uh, uh, paid part of that $17 million that was 
uh, voted by the taxpayers of Hampton to do the infrastructure improvement. They also put up with all of the uh, hell that it was as what they did it, but everybody does it because they know it's for the greater good. They all want to work together. We want to work together. When they pay their four and a half million dollars, they, they're not thinking about the money that the state gets. That's a whole separate issue, just like Phil said, a whole separate issue. They pay their money, and they're expecting their sidewalks to be taken care of uh, at least up in the last couple of years, they couldn't even get permission because there was such a backlog between the state and the town to even get permission. Mr. Walsh had to work overtime to get the permission. And in fact, the new businesses that go there, they um, generally pay to have the sidewalks done in front of their place. And people like Chuck have done his own sidewalks on his own. Uh, and many people do, but we couldn't even get permission because it was a problem. So I'm totally, again, I think these sidewalks need to be removed uh, so that the people that are being taxed get some representation. They deserve to have a say in this, and they're getting no say. They're caught in the middle. Uh, the, uh, the ADA accessible, uh, like I talked to Mr. Welch today, and he says, well, you know, we might have to, uh, there is no um, problem with insurance if someone falls or whatever because that's covered under the town's master plan, master policy. And we know that that's not going to go up because we've, we've had that information. Now there might be... Pardon me. Phil, I don't appreciate what you're doing, Phil. Okay. Okay. I'm Class listening to you. Like can, I'm not. You can do it to I'm Mary not Louise, but please don't I heard do that it to before. Me. I'm just go okay, ahead. Okay. You're going to hear it again okay. too. I know I am. Okay. So, uh, you know, I get, now I understand why Mary Louise was so unsettled after you did this. So can we get back on this track, please? Okay. Well, it's hard. Well you then. Have people laughing that are sitting right next to you. Can we get back on track, please? Yes. So I hope. Thank you. That that was not for me. It was meant for. Okay, thanks, who it was meant for. Uh, You know, I, uh, we, these ADA accessible has. Um, we should embrace the fact that we're going to be able to do that. Now, Mr. Welch says that something might go wrong. There'll be a, uh, some damage. Well, of course, we'll fix it up. I will have to tell you. The state hasn't done anything for the last 40 years on the sidewalks. I've lived on Ocean Boulevard for 50 years. And when I was a kid, they were beautiful, but they're not beautiful now. Um, I also uh, feel that the school uh, has some responsibility to hear for the, the students that live in Hampton. They need to have some place to stand, the people that are on Ocean Boulevard. The state, you, the town of Hampton at one point didn't do anything for the, uh, uh, the school kids in Hampton, but after a lot of discussion was made uh, with people that lived down there on Ashworth Avenue, Mr. Welch worked to make it happen, and they now do certain areas of Ashworth Avenue. There should be something like that done on Ocean Boulevard, too. And, it, you know, I don't... I can't imagine why anyone would want to have certain areas that are never used uh, to have to plow them, but you know we'll see. Um, also, the bigger the sidewalks is only a small part because the roads and the drains also we're looking to have those done as soon as possible. Because once they do put new drains in, all of a sudden the two drains that the town has that come down off Boar's Head that are their drains uh, pretty much do nothing now, but the town could tie into these drains and make the drains work so that the water that cascades like a fountain off a of boar's head could be dealt with. That's the town's responsibility. Uh, and, you know, I would like the uh, residents of Ocean Boulevard to be respected like recently when $167,000 was spent on Toll Farm Road without little discussion at this board. It just was mentioned, um, and we voted to do it. They resurfaced it. It's where Rusty lives. He, you know. Excuse me, sir. I'm Excuse sorry. me. I'm Excuse sorry. me. First of all, Toll Farm Road is a town road. 
not a state road. So keep your facts straight. Okay. Thank you. $167,000. We're only asking for 100000 I bet you Toll Farm Road doesn't bring in the $4.5 million that Ocean Boulevard does. And I say we should be treated like the residents of Toll Farm Road. Thank you. And I'm also, I would like to uh, talk about um, we are going to need more employees probably in the future at DPW for a variety of reasons. And that's a discussion we need to have here. Are you finished? Yes. I'll Thank be, you. I'm not finished. I'll be back. <laughs> Mr. Bean. I, pardon me for smiling and having some jocularity. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, could I just uh, hear from the town manager on his interpretation um, and uh, of, of this that was put forth tonight? It's the first time I've seen it. Mr. Chairman, can we go to the rest of the board first? Can we do that first? Go ahead. Whatever your pleasure is. I'd rather say, I'd, I would rather have the board speak okay. first. And then you ask me a question? And then I'll ask you and, and you asked if I wanted to go next? Okay. And again, um, sorry, I'm, I'm having a good time. Um, and uh, this, this has been an interesting uh, Warren article. Uh, again, it's totally separate from uh, the analysis of uh, your annual report. And you struggle with it, and you look at it, and you listen. And you communicate, and that's what happens when people actually come to meetings, and you understand what's going. On. Not when they speak to certain people on the phone, not when they speak to uh, certain committee members, but when they actually come up and you have a dialogue. And sometimes people smile, sometimes people get a little stern, but it's communications and it's business. And Mr. Preston owns a business, and Mr. Ray owns a business, and there's a bunch of business owners here. And the struggle with this for me um, was Article 31. Uh, in 2012, I was at that meeting, and I want to be very careful about um, what I say because uh, it's the voters' will, and uh, it, there was a vote. And as I look at this, um, uh, and I don't want to walk away from standing up to a vote because you're a selectman and the motion's been made tonight. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't have made the motion tonight. I'd like some more research, and maybe I can get some information tonight from Mr. Welch. But it says that. Um, a memorandum of understanding, uh, and I would like to tighten up the motion if we're going to go forward with it, in order that I vote with Motion's it. Motion's been made and seconded, and, so and any motion will have to be amended. I, 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 I understand parliamentary procedure, and I thank you, but it, it does it does not say um, uh, in when the voters voted it was to maintain, uh, repair, construct, and reconstruct the sidewalks. Now, if it said to maintain or repair or construct then that would be a clear uh, prohibition for supporting what the Hampton Beach Area Commission wants tonight. But as I read this, and I've struggled to, 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 to interpret this, and that's why information and conversation is good, the way I am reading it, um, it's the agreement uh, it was voted against to maintain collectively, to maintain, repair, construct, and reconstruct. And as I read this, um, that's not what the commission is asking for tonight. They are asking simply to maintain, and there's a big difference. And the voters voted against um, maintaining and repairing and constructing and reconstructing. And this, which Mr. Griffin, if I can smile without him yelling at me, um, is, uh, is a different ball of wax to me tonight on Article 31. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm leaning down that road as we go. And then my questions would be, because I don't have any information on exactly what the construction project looks like, but the sidewalks are ADA compliant. What specifications are they made? And, and we've got Mr. Watson here. Um, that these mirror the Route 1 sidewalks, as Mr. Nyan has asked Public Works, what has been the maintenance outlay on those uh, in the last 15 years or 10 years? And so with this, the spirit of, spirit of um, your intent, I'm moving very close to. And I just wanted to hear some more information, Mr. Chairman, about exactly what that sidewalk looks like, how ADA compliant is it, uh, and what's it going to be, and again, drilling down from what point it goes to to what point. So if I hear a little bit more information of that, along with the drainage, um, that will satisfy my information request tonight, sir. Thank you. Good. Well, Jim? I found out from Nancy tonight that one of my concerns was, wait, you know, not just 
getting rid of the snow, but where it would go. Because I know not everyone is around the beach in the winter time, but two years ago there was snow everywhere. So, you know, your department being willing to push that into the street, that's great. That's, you know, I think that would make it more workable for us to actually possibly be able to get to those sidewalks. I'd like to maybe get some more information from Chris at Public Works and see how he feels about it. And, you know, communication, like tonight we're all here together, it's great. Some people aren't here, but it seems that, you know, if I sit down with John Nye and sit down with Nancy, I can maybe get the information I need. Believe me, I don't live down there, but I've enjoyed it down there for a long, long time. And I know that work needs to get done. But at the same time, DOT is saying that they don't have the manpower to maintain sidewalks. Well, right now, we don't really either. So we really need to sit additional sidewalks, never mind the ones that we already have, 22, 27, whatever it is, miles of sidewalk. So I think the important thing that we do is get together, get the information. You know, we made a motion. I'm not, like I said, this is the first time that we're actually getting information, but it seems like everyone's willing to work together. And I think that is definitely something that needs to be done. I know the business owners and the residents suffer down there with drainage issues. And, you know, the other side of the beach does look great. And I think that uh, I'm glad all you guys came tonight. You answered a lot of questions I had. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be less verbose than anybody else. I think Rick made a good point. Fairness, the people out there pay taxes. ADA, you got to embrace ADA. There's no, there's no way you can get around it. And you got to accept the responsibility of ADA if you, if you accept it. It's got to be ADA 100%, doesn't it? A, there's no issue of how it's going to be ADA. It has to be ADA. I know I went down there once last winter with one of my family members who was in a wheelchair, and we were going down to the <coughs> beach, and the state had plowed the west east side, but they hadn't plowed the end of the ramp. <laughs> that was pretty dumb. <laughs> but, but, he, but his brother carried him. He got on a big piggyback, so it's no big deal. But, uh, you know, the... the the issue of people taking care of their own sidewalk, the state constitution says you can't do that. But that's dumb that they haven't put anything like that in the state constitution, but they did. But I, you know, we've heard people talk and talk and talk and talk. Take a vote. Okay. That's my point. First of all, we've heard, we've heard a lot of information here. We heard a lot of information from Mrs. Stiles, Senator Stiles, when she started. And so we don't make the mistakes of the past, we still have to look at the past. And we've had a lot of mistakes in those pasts. A lot of things have been said by the state that they won't do this and they won't do that. And it's off the table, we're not gonna talk about it. We heard from Senator Stiles tonight. She's willing to bring us together to talk about that. I think that's very important. And much to my friend to the left here, I grew up on Hampton Beach. I spent 45 years of my life living on Hampton Beach. Hampton Beach is where my home always was, and it's where my heart always is. Those roads down there are terrible. The sidewalks down there are terrible. We need to do something. But before we can do something, I feel we need to have a discussion with DOT, with DREAD, and I'm hoping that Senator Stiles, I wish she was still here when, because I wanted to mention this. Uh, I hope she could bring us together. I, I think a vote today, we, we need some more information. I think it's a little premature, but we have somebody that made a motion and it was seconded. Um, I would be willing to entertain a tabling motion for a couple of weeks. So is that gonna hurt our discussion? There's an, old, there's an old saying, and I think we should follow it, and everybody knows what it is. Something yeah, to get off begins the begins with S, right? Yeah. Okay, I agree. It's time. I mean, we, we've got the information. I, I'm sorry, but I don't think we have it. Well, I, I would I, like I, to talk again. Oh, well, I, I well, asked for information, and, yep, and okay. I, I, I and, haven't received and it. And, and I, I'm here to talk until the cows come home or until 6 in the morning because this is the town's business. And I Fine. think ADA is very important. It's worth spending the time on talking about. It has to be, it has to be 100% so, ADA. There's okay. no question on it. I, I, the state owns it. 
It has to be. Well, it's not now. The state owns it. When they construct it. Does that have I, to wait, do with on. the fact that it's federal funding, Mr. Watson? Hold on. That, that's a good question to answer. Go ahead. No, it has nothing to do with federal funds. Publicly accessible sidewalks have to be ADA compliant statewide, whether they're owned by the town, the state, or anyone else. So I've had my piece. Every member of this board has had their piece. I will send it back to Mr. Bean. He asked a question to, for the town manager, and I, I think we have the right to do so. I, I do want to hear from Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, gentlemen, um, this is all pretty old stuff. I was looking through the file this morning, and this goes back to the state's reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard in 1959. Um, when those sidewalks were rebuilt in the early 1990s when the state spent $250,000 on trying to fix things up. Um, and as Bill will tell you, $250,000 is just about enough to scratch the top of this table today. It's not going to do very much. Just to give you the right figures, the town currently has 12.97 miles of sidewalk that we clear. That's another 6.64 .6 miles of sidewalk that we do not clear. Uh, and it comes to 22? comes to 22. Yeah. Round figures, 22. Um, if uh, we reach an agreement with the state, which is not a bad idea. I think Bill and I tried to do this at one point a number of years ago, and that just didn't work out. Um, we would be adding uh, 2.51 miles, which would be the sidewalks on the west side of Ocean Boulevard, according to their figures. Uh, the east side has 4.09, which DREAD takes care of. That's part of their responsibilities. Um, and there are other additional sidewalks in town, but they're very small. Um, nothing that we actually get to maintain or the state gets to maintain. Uh, I listened to Senator Stiles when she was here, and, and she had a darn good suggestion, and that was that the people who live along Ocean Boulevard should help clear. Unfortunately, our state Supreme Court declared that to be unconstitutional about uh, 60 or 70 years ago. So that's out of the picture, even though the town has accepted that statute uh, and it's currently still in the books. Um, it goes back to a law in the 1890s that the legislature passed and has subsequently been declared unconstitutional. So without amending the Constitution, we're not going to get anywhere with that. So let's move on from that, that particular item. Um, this is a completely different proposition than what was proposed before. And Bill and I both worked on what was proposed before. Uh, the only reason that was stopped was because of a personal telephone call I received from the commissioner at the time, who was no longer the commissioner, who said that uh, cooperation between the town and the state on this issue was dead on sidewalks. We're not talking about it. I said, that's fine. That's, that's okay. That's your privilege. Uh, and basically it stopped the talk. Uh, although that wasn't the intention. I know Bill was ready to sit down and do an MOU, and so was I. Um, I think what you see here is something that's going to have to go through governor and council, and it's going to have to be a formal proposal that will live with time, because it's got to be a breathing document. This can't be something that's stagnant and, and dead if you're going to do something of this nature. Um, there needs to be close cooperation between DRED, DOT, and the town to do something of this nature. and. Um, it can be done, but this is completely different than what was proposed before. So I think this is worth looking at. I think this is something that we should look at. I think it's something that we should spend some time on. Uh, how, the, how the board decides they want to do that is their decision, not mine. Um, but I would suggest that we have something rather than an MOU, but actually a contractual agreement between the state and the town to uh, carry out the responsibilities that would be enamored in such a wonderful document, uh, if we can get the bloody thing done, and I hope we can. Um, it would save the town a lot of money, it will save the state a lot of money, and it will save the people a lot of money. And I think that's where we're all trying to go. That's where we're trying to go before with this. Uh, but an MOU won't cut it this time. I think it's got to be a, an actual governor and council document so that when we both want to make a change, we go to them and they, they okay it, and there's a third party that looks at it. So 
Uh, I could go into a lot of detail on, on um, our past discussions. I can go into a lot of detail on things that I've learned from going through the file, but I think it would just add a lot of conversation that's not necessary at this point. Uh, you need to take a few minutes and not knee-jerk react to the first blush you see. I think you need to explore this, and there is very specific wording here, and it has very specific meanings. And um, having this spent 30 years in public works, I can tell you that uh, somebody handed this to me as a public works director, the first thing I'd say is I want my legal counsel to look at it, because I want to know exactly what it says. And, and, and no fooling around about it, we all need to go in the same direction. And that direction should be to do something that's constructive for everybody. So, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Well, hold on first. Mr. Bean had asked a question, so I want to make sure his, his questions were answered. Right. Did I ask your question? Yeah, so you're saying there, there needs to be a legal chat? Is that your advice on this? These are words. Mm -hmm. They have specific meanings when put together in this particular form. And I think we all should know from the standpoint, from a legal standpoint, what those words mean when constructed in this particular format. So we're all operating from the same base. So there's no question about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, it's no good to get down the road and find out that this means something besides what we think it means. And this is still a, a, a state piece of property that the town of Hampton will be maintaining, is that correct? From this, yes. Is that correct? And so there would there would need to be. Uh, it's got to be an agreement. And got it. And we don't have one now. Mr. Chair, go ahead, Mr. Yeah. Um, I think to to both of your comments. Um, you know, it's assumed right now, uh, Selectman Bean, to the to the ultimate construction reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard. If there wants to be a conversation about ownership and transfer of ownership from the state to the town of any portion of the road or the sidewalks, that's, that's a conversation that can be had. I'm not saying we should, I'm not saying we have to, but that's, that's part of the project development process. That's a requirement for us to, to at least look into those things. So that's, that, that's a, and that's not something any of us can answer tonight, what that looks like, that, that, that has to happen through the design process. To the wording of the motion that or the recommendation that's been placed in front of you that now forms a motion. I know that's the recommendation from the Beach Commission. If in your review with the town attorney or amongst yourselves, um, there needs to be some modification to that wording so that when conversation of an agreement moves forward and, and that negotiating and compromising happens with, with the department, so that we put something in front of GNC ultimately, if that's our collective goal, then don't be wedded to the wording in here. We'd be willing to to compromise and, and have that communication that, that um, so that we walk away with a common understanding and a comfortable understanding. We just want the conversation to happen. Well, I think we all do. And again, um, I feel that um, the $96 million that the beach is going to contribute uh, or the $12 million that's going to be contributed uh, from Ocean Boulevard, over $12 million, um, is reason I don't want the sidewalks to get caught up in this discussion. This discussion that needs to happen needs to happen. But the taxpayers that live in Hampton need to be served now. And it's unfortunate that this is only one small step. It's still going to take eight years, but why would we delay it? And I'm anxious to see how the vote's going to go. I'd like to call the vote. OK. We have a, a calling of the vote, I think. Uh, uh, I, I would like to amend the uh, motion. And I'm in favor of the spirit of this. Uh, I'm in favor of the spirit of this. I think my motion's a motion is a priority, isn't it? Uh, it that yes, has, it is. That ha it is a priority motion. Um, if it, following if it, parliamentary procedure. Would you, if, would if, you well, yield, my sailor friend? <laughs> if, we'll have a motion. It's been seconded. It's been asked to move. 
if that motion fails, then we can come up with another motion. Doesn't mean that it failed, doesn't mean that it's over. Just means that we're going forward. Somebody could come up with another motion, somebody could come up with something else. So we, we've had a call of a mo vote, and so I think we have to do that. And so all those in favor of the motion, raise their hands. All those opposed, three to two, it passes. So. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.